today I teach you guys how to edit your own highlight release. What's up guys, it's Bravity. Welcome back to another video. Today we are in the editor and I'm going to teach you guys how to edit your own highlight reels. I am a professional video editor. It's what I do for a living. I work for a video production company making local and national commercials. So I know a lot about video editing. I've also been a freelance video editor for going on 10 years now. So I'm taking all my experience, putting them into these highlight reels. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to make your own. If you guys would like to see an example of my work, I will leave a link to my latest highlight reel in the description below. And if you would like to see the highlight reel we are creating in this video for Pap Callum, I will leave a link to that in the description as well. But here we are in the editor. We're gonna go ahead and get started on how to edit your highlight reels. So we're here in Premiere Pro. It is what I use to edit. It is the industry standard video editor. If you are looking for one, I can't recommend Adobe Premiere's Creative Suite enough. I'll put a link down to that in the description as well. But you use Premiere Pro to edit. And if you're working on something else, this tutorial will still help you a little bit in the basics, but I'm going to be diving into some pretty big specifics in Adobe Premiere Pro, but you'll still be able to get some tips out of it if you're editing in Sony Vegas or something like that. But the first step you're gonna need to do when you're editing a highlight video is cancel out of your editor. That's right, we are not starting in the editor. What you wanna do is you wanna pick out your music first. It is very important for the vibe and the flow of your highlight reels to pick out music before you start editing. You wanna to edit to the music. So I'm gonna leave a bunch of music sites down in the description, um, some paid ones, some free ones, but you guys wanna make sure you're not using like popular songs and whatnot. That's a good way to get a copyright strike or your video removed. But the, the good sites you can use are like artlist.io, that's what I'm at right now that we're gonna be using. Uh, the music bed premium beat those are all paid options and if you want free options there's the no copyright sound YouTube channel and then there's also the YouTube audio library all links for those are in the description you just got to choose what quality of music you want do you want free or do you want paid I've got a subscription to artlist.io so I can get all this music through my subscription so I will be using that to pick out my music for this video all right guys we're back in the editor because we have selected our music and it's time to begin the highlight reel making process. So we're gonna open up the Explorer here into Papa Callum's folder or Papa Callum, not sure how to pronounce it. Let me know down in the comments because I know he's gonna watch this video, but we're in his folder. We've got his folder here of tons of Fortnite clips. So we're just gonna drag this whole footage folder into our project window in Premiere Pro here, and it's gonna begin the importing process. So once you've got all your footage and assets imported, you're going to create a sequence, which is your timeline, where you're gonna put all your clips and assemble your video. So you're gonna go up to File, New, Sequence. So you can name the sequence whatever you want. I'm not gonna name it right now, I'm gonna leave it Sequence 2, and you can ignore all these settings up here, and I'm gonna show you why in a second. Just hit OK, it's gonna create your timeline right here. You're gonna go over to your footage, pick any clip you want, does not matter, drag it into your timeline, and it's gonna show you this. Clip settings don't match sequence settings. All you have to do is hit change sequence settings and boom, all those settings I told you not to worry about have now been changed to match the settings of your clip. So we are off and running. So you can just delete that clip that you threw in there. The sequence settings are set. We don't have to worry about it now and we can drag in our music and begin to edit. So I have a bit of an idea of what I'm gonna be doing at the beginning. Since Papa Callum doesn't have a logo or an intro or anything, I'm gonna make a nice cinematic in playground mode of Fortnite to be begin his clip and then we're gonna push into the actual highlights. So I'm not too familiar with his highlights here. I haven't looked at them too much. So I'm just gonna start going through and picking out uh, the clips that I wanna use. Knowing him, most of them are probably gonna be used. They're probably all really good clips. So now it's time to begin the actual editing. When you're in Premiere Pro, you're gonna have two windows here. You're gonna have a source window and a program window. Your program window is showing whatever is on your timeline here, what you have already assembled, and then the source window is what you are looking at in your footage down here. So if I click to see new footage, this is where you can watch, that was very loud, this is where you can watch the clips, and then when you bring them into the timeline down here, they'll show up in the program monitor. So when you're editing in Premiere, you wanna double click on the clip that you wanna edit, it's gonna come up here to the source monitor, and you're just gonna slowly scrub through, figure out what parts you wanna use, and you can hit I on your keyboard, 
and then you can hit O on your keyboard to mark in and out points. So when you drag this clip in, it's only gonna drag in what is in between these two points. If you don't wanna remember I and O, you can hit these two buttons right here. So I'm gonna go through all of his clips, start to pick out the little sections that I wanna use and put together a little rough edit in the timeline. And when I think of a tip or a trick that I wanna tell you guys, I'll stop and I'll talk to you. All right, guys, it's been a little while since I have seen you. I have put together all the clips in the timeline, all where I want them to go. Took a little while to go through and find out what clips I wanted to use, but now we're gonna go through the timeline. I'm gonna show you some of the choices I made and some of the little tips and tricks that I think will help you to get your videos to be something like this. So the first thing I wanna show you guys is how it's edited to the song. I told you guys you need to pick out your music first and then edit to the beat, and I'll show you what that means right here with this clip. Right here. Notice how the bullet hits the guy. He gets killed right when that beat drops. And another basic and simple example of that is when you're just cutting between two clips. It doesn't need to be when you kill someone. Just when you're cutting between two clips, just make sure you're cutting on a beat like this right here. See that right there? When it goes, oh, we cut to a new clip right here, right on the beat. Right there. So whenever you're going through, just go frame by frame and listen to those drums and those kicks and those cymbals and just try to put your cuts right on those. It looks really nice to have uh, your cuts right on these audio cues. So make sure you find the beat of the song and then try to cut to that. And then you can also try to time your kills and your gunshots to the beat as well. And I'll show you how to do that next. So we have this clip up in our source monitor right here where he runs up, he does the tidy dance right here and then he snipes the dude in the face. So I'm gonna show you how you can line that up with the music. What you wanna do is you wanna go frame by frame and find right where the bullet connects with the guy. So about right there is good. And you can put your end point there. So start your video clip right where the bullet hits. Then you wanna drag that clip into the timeline. So now you know right where this shot starts is where the guy dies. So you wanna go frame by frame through your song and then right when you find the beat that you want the shot to hit on, you drag this clip to right there, because you know the shot starts right there, and then drag your clip out in front to get the pre-shot stuff. So then you've got your clip to where it would hit right where the song does. I do that many times in this video, and I recommend you line up shots and kills to the beat because it makes for some really awesome highlights. Next one I'm gonna show you guys is a trick called speed ramping. This is what speed ramping looks like. Notice how when he flew through the air, when he pulled his shotgun out, he went in slow motion and then it sped up and he flicked to the guy and headshot him. So there's multiple ways to do that and the way I'm doing it is a little bit advanced, but I'm gonna show you guys a quick way that you can get the same effect. So here we have the clip that I used, just an impulse into a shotgun. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna scrub through and right when you get to the point where you want the slow motion to start, so right here, you're gonna put a cut in your clip and then you're gonna scrub forward and right where you want it to come back to full speed. So like right here, you wanna cut again. Then you're gonna wanna drag this clip out to make some room. Select this clip, right click, go to speed and duration, click on that, and then you can extend the clip out. So we're gonna extend it and slow it down to about 50%. So like that 50%, so the clip is now in slow motion. And then we can just drag this clip back in and we have something that looks like this. So as you can see, impulses goes into slow motion. Right before the shot, we go back into full speed. And that's how you wanna do a really basic speed ramp inside of Premiere Pro. And that can also make for some great highlight reels. Have a little speed ramp and then have that beat hit when it comes back into full speed. You're gonna have some awesome, awesome clips when you do that kind of editing techniques. Next up guys, I wanna show you another technique I did on this shot right here. So if you watch it, as you can see, when he takes the shot, we zoom in on the scope right there. So you can see a little bit better when the bullet connects with the body. Since he's so far away, it, you can really see it. So I went ahead and punched in right there to the beat. And I'm gonna show you guys how you can do that. So guys, we've got our clip here of the snipe. 
just like that. And I'm gonna show you guys how you can scale in and zoom in on that clip. So we're gonna go to right where the gun fires in this clip. So right there. And we're gonna select the clip and we're gonna go up to effects controls. There's an effects controls panel right here. And we're gonna to start to play with keyframes. So this might get a little bit confusing. These stopwatches next to all these parameters are how you access your keyframes. And since we're zooming in, we're gonna to wanna to access the scale. So we're gonna hit the stopwatch next to the scale and that's gonna trigger our keyframes. You see it placed a little dot here and that is just saying that at this dot, it is going to be at scale 100. So if we go forward just a couple frames here, just like that, maybe, maybe 10 frames or so, I don't know, just keep going forward like that. And then if we change our scale, you're gonna see it creates a new keyframe. So let's say if we changed it to like 179 and it creates a new keyframe. So now it's saying at this point, you're at 179. At this point, you're at 100. This point, you're at 179. So now it's going to transition to those two scale numbers right in between those keyframes. So if we play it, you see it just does a nice little zoom right on the fire. So that's how you guys wanna do zooms. That's how you'll also tackle if you wanna zoom in on a face cam or something. If there's a face cam baked into the footage, you can do a nice little zoom into the face cam to get a nice reaction shot. But that's how you're gonna do your all scales and position moving around is using the effects control panels and keyframes. Next, I'm gonna talk about a little bit more of an advanced technique, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway, and that is your audio meters over here. So these are your audio meters, and this is how you know how loud your footage is gonna be without uh, going based off your headphones, because some people might have their volume different. So when I play my clips, you're gonna see that sometimes it goes all the way up to the top and gets red, just like that. That means that your clips are peaking, that means that that is extremely loud, and you should probably bring your volume down so that it is no longer peaking. So the way you do that is you wanna click on your audio layer that you're wanting to adjust. So right here, these gunshots is what makes it peak. You click on your audio layer here, go up to your effects controls and where the volume is, you wanna disable the keyframes off the volume by hitting that stopwatch. And then you just wanna drag down the decibels. We can probably drag it down about two or three and get it to stop peaking, I believe. There you go. So as you can see, those gunshots are no longer peaking. So you wanna make sure that nothing in your video is really peaking too much. You can still make a nice hype and loud video without having things peaking. And usually a good rule of thumb is you want your audio to be between negative six and negative three decibels. So you can see a little negative six number right here. So as long as your audio is hanging out around in that area between that and zero, then you should be good to go. So if we watch, the audio will hang out in that little area. And there you go guys, that's a nice little audio technique to make sure that nobody's watching your videos and like having to pull off their headphones because a gunshot was extremely loud. All right guys, now that we got everything laid out in the timeline and got some effects in there, it's time to jump into Fortnite and record some cinematics. So we're gonna record some cool shots of dancing and um, sometimes when he flies through the air using an impulse grenade, we'll get a nice second view of that. So we just gotta match his skin and then jump into a playground and get some clips going. All right guys, I've gone back and looked through his clips and I've decided that the one we're gonna be recreating in Playground is when he's Technique in Tomato Town and he impulses and pulls out a shotgun and gets a nice impulse shotgun kill. So we are here in Tomato Town. We've recreated this ramp. We've got the impulses, we've got the shotgun and we are just going to do a quick little recreation of it. I'm Technique. I don't have his backpack, but I got the closest thing. So we're just gonna do this a couple times. And then we just have to go into replay mode and get a nice cinematic of it. All right, so here we are in replay mode. I've got my technique flying through the air using a impulse grenade. Got her framed up nicely in the right spot that I want. I've got it dropped down to 0.1 on the speed so we can get some nice slow motion. I'm gonna hit H one time to hide the HUD. I'm gonna hold down right click. And when I click spacebar, I'm gonna follow her as far as I can through the sky to get a nice cinematic shot. Here we go. And that's it. All right, we are back in the editor. I'm wearing a different shirt. It has been days since the last clip I recorded it for this tutorial when we were in replay mode. That was days ago. We're back though, we're gonna get into it. We have our cinematic here 
in the editor and if we play through i've already added it in see impulses we cut to the cinematic got a nice little zoom there and if i click on that go to effects controls you see the keyframes that we covered where once we hit this keyframe we go from 100 scale and we move to the next one and we go to 150 scale we also move the position that's what these two dots are these are the position keyframes these are the scale keyframes right down here um, so we just get a nice little zoom in on our character, add some production value to our highlight reel. So let's play that one more time. Yeet. He jumps and zoom in on the character and shotgun. So that's pretty much it for adding cinematics to your highlight reels. I think you guys should do it. It adds a lot of production value, makes it look like you really took time on it because you did. It takes a lot to go into playground mode, uh, recreate all the stuff that you did in your clips and then record cinematics of it. That's a lot of work. So people, people notice that and they realize uh, you spent a lot of work on this highlight reel but I believe that is all the tips I'm going to be covering in this first episode once again if there's anything in the highlight reel that I did or in any highlight reel you see that you would like covered on how you can do that in editing make sure you let me know down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter it's BravityM on Twitter and I will make another video about how to do all those effects I can do pretty much anything that you see in any highlight reel most stuff is pretty basic editing and once I show you how to do it you guys will be off and running and definitely be able to do it yourself but the only thing we have left to do now once your video is done is export the video so you're gonna go to the beginning of your video and you're gonna hit I on the keyboard you're gonna make sure that this little selected area you see I'm dragging it around this is at the beginning of your video and then once again you're gonna go to the end of your video and you can hit O whenever the video is done or when your music cuts out so like right there hit O or you can just drag it there and then you're gonna make sure that your timeline is selected just by clicking on it this blue box around the timeline will let you know that it's selected you see that blue box will move around to different things when you click on it make sure the timeline has the blue box around it then you're going to go up to file export media and here is your exporting window very simple h264 make sure that's selected out of this line h264 go to presets scroll down to youtube 10 ADP. And that's it. Once you select YouTube 1080p, you're done. You can click on sequence two right here where it's blue, and that'll allow you to rename it and save it wherever you want on your computer. And then you just have to hit export and it's going to export the video for you. You can upload it to YouTube, upload it to social media, do whatever you want. But that is how you make a highlight reel, guys. And if there's anything in this video that I did not cover well enough that you still don't understand, reach out to me on Twitter or in the comments below, and I will make a more in-depth video on this. This is the first of many editing tutorials. So if you guys did like the content here, but you need more, you need more tips, you still want to learn how to do stuff, let me know on Twitter because I will be making more of these styles of videos. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned how to edit your own highlight reels a bit better. Make sure you like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you really liked it. And don't forget to share this video on Twitter with your friends and all over the place if they need help editing as well. But I will see you guys in another video. Peace out.